Good morning, brethren. Another Sunday morning to celebrate God's goodness to our lives. Some of us may not see it now because of our current situation, but rest assured that the Lord is working in our lives for our good. Amen. I would like to invite you to open your Bibles with me in Psalm 25. Let's read this passage from verse 1 to 7, and let's make it our prayer today. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I trust, O my God. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame, but they will put shame who are treacherous without excuse. Show me your way, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, O Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from old. Remember not my sin of my youth and my rebellious ways according to your love. Remember me, for you are good, O Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Maraming maraming salamat Panginoon sa iyong kabutihan at katapatan sa bawat isa sa amin. Di man namin naiintindihan ang mga bagay-bagay, ngunit sapat na ang pang-araw-araw na pagmamahal na pinadaraman niyo sa amin. Lord, thank you that your mercies are new every morning and that your steadfast love is unchanging. God, you are faithful. You are forever faithful, O Lord. Thank you so much.
This kind of woman, but isn't she lovely? She's my mom. Happy Mother's Day! Thank you, Mom, for being our full time chef, full time nurse, full time guidance counselor, full time friend, full time lahat mo. Pero sa pagiging mapagpasensya at perfect mong mama sa amin. Thank you for always there for us. And thank you for always loving us. Ma, thank you so much for your hard work. Your patience. And of course for everything else. You are full of new discoveries each day. You never stop to amaze us with those new discoveries. Hi mom, um, thank you for everything. Thank you for the sacrifices you've made. I love you. Isn't she lovely? Isn't she wonderful? Isn't she precious? Such a beautiful soul. I can't believe God to be a mom as lovely as she. So very lovely. So very Mothers out there, we usually call them mommy, mom, mama, nanay, inay, nai, and momshis. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, let's all extend our hands and pray for our mothers. Our Abba Father, we praise and thank you for the gift of mothers. Thank you for their lives and the sacrifices they endure for their children and family. I pray that you bless them with wisdom, understanding, and discernment so that every word they say, every decision they make will be aligned to your will and not dictated by emotions alone. Bless them with peace in their hearts so that they may feel your comforting presence, especially during hardships and troubles. Bless them with pure and humble hearts that always follow and acknowledge you, and that whatever they have accomplished will give glory to you alone. Bless them with good health and protect them from all diseases and harm. Be their strength, especially during those times that they feel helpless and weak. May they always have that precious quiet moments with you, always seeking your presence, giving you reverence and honor. And as you bless them, may their lives be the extension of your hands reaching out to those in need. I pray that you look upon them with great favor as they walk by faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy Mother's Day! Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Good morning, brothers and sisters. That passage came from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. 
Let us continue to worship the Lord our God through the giving of our tithes and love offerings. And let us not forget to greet our mothers, all the mothers today. A happy Mother's Day. Celebrate this special, special occasion, this special day with your families and loved ones. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you, Lord, for who you are. You are Almighty God, the Great I Am, and our Abba Father. Lord, we thank you for your continuous protection and provision, O Lord God, for each and every one of us, O Lord. We pray, Lord, that our tithes and love offerings now may be like incense rising up to your throne. We pray, Lord, that this may be used for the furtherance of your kingdom. And we also, Lord God, pray for our mothers, for all the mothers today, O Lord God. Continue to bless them, O Lord God, with strength and good health, wisdom as well, O Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for the protection, that, for the covering that you give us, O Lord God, through the blood of the Lamb. We bring back all the praises and glory, O Lord God, in your name alone, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, everyone.
Hello! Blessed Mother's Day Sunday morning to you all who are listening. You know, though this pandemic may have forced us to connect safely only through this means, but let us look at this period of celebration as an opportunity to create new traditions and to stay connected while apart. And if you, like me, find it challenging to spend quality time online, but I still hope and pray that each one of you will nonetheless recognize that moment of destiny in your life. Because who knows but that you may have come listening now for such a time like this. And that is precisely what I want to bring you this morning. That no matter the circumstances in your life, but when a particular opportunity arises to serve God despite your situation, I hope and pray that you will find yourself still determined to do and answer God's call, just like Esther did. And that is our text this morning. If you can turn to the book of Esther in your Bible, chapter 4, verses 1 to 17. Esther 4, 1 to 17. When Mordecai learned all that had happened, he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes and went out into the midst of the city. He cried out with a loud and bitter cry. He went as far as the front of the king's gate, for no one might enter the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province where the king's command and decree arrived, there was great mourning among the Jews, with fasting, weeping, and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So Esther's maids and eunuchs came and told her, and the queen was deeply distressed. Then she sent garments to clothe Mordecai and take his sackcloth away from him, but he would not accept them. Then Esther called Hathash, one of the king's eunuchs, whom he had appointed to attend to her, and she gave him a command concerning Mordecai to learn what and why this was. So Hathash went out to Mordecai in the city square that was in front of the king's gates, and Mordecai told him all that had happened to him and the sum of money that Haman had promised to pay into the king's treasuries to destroy the Jews. He also gave him a copy of the written decree for their destruction, which was given at Shushan, that he might show it to Esther and explain to her, and that he might command her to go into the king to make a supplication to him and plead before him for her people. So Hathash returned and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Then Esther spoke to Hathash and gave him a command for Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that any man or woman who goes into the inner court of the king who has not been called, he has but one law, put all to death, except the one to whom the king holds out the golden scepter, that he may live. Yet I myself have not been called to go into the king these thirty days. So they told Mordecai Esther's words. And Mordecai told them to answer Esther, Do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all the other Jews. For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place, but you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, Go gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My maid and I will fast likewise. And so I will go to the king, which is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded. Let us pray. God of perfect peace, when everything in our life seems so messy, when uncertainties in the future had us on its grip and we are left anxious and worried, when our hearts are heavy and filled with sadness, even when nothing makes sense in our lives and we are weary and frustrated. Guide us and help us, O Lord, to cast our cares on you, to direct our steps towards you, to get our lives firmly planted in your love. Open our eyes to see only you. Open our ears to hear your word of counsel. Open our hearts to that perfect peace 
that you alone can give. This is our cry to you, Jesus, and in your name we pray. Amen. You see, to better understand the message here, let me first give you the scenario prior to the scriptures we read. You see, the promised land at this time of our story lay in ruins. The Assyrians and then the Babylonians conquered the twelve tribes. The line of kings were taken into captivity and there were few and scattered prophets across the Babylonian Empire. And the chosen people too were either executed or exiled. But when the Persians defeated the Babylonians and came into global power, this Persian Empire allowed the Jews to return back to their land. But much as the law and the prophets encouraged the Jewish people to return to the promised land, not many people did. Why? Because the chosen people of God, after 70 years of captivity, began to prefer the comfort and convenience of life that they had come to know outside the promised land. And Esther and Mordecai were among those who chose not to return. And this is when our story unfolds. At this time of Esther's life, the ruler of the Persian Empire was King Kayasha. That was his Persian name. He is also known as King Ahasuerus. That was his Hebrew name. But he is greater known by his Greek name, Xerxes. And he ruled for a period of 18 years. Now this King Xerxes was a psychotic evil king with a split personality. This was a king who when he was offered 10 million towards the expense of his military expedition, he was so moved by this generous gesture that he not only returned the money, but the 10 million was also accompanied by a present worth 3 million. That's how grateful and generous he could be. But when this same old guy who offered him this 10 million had also given all his sons to join in this military expedition, but when he only asked to spare the eldest son to care for him in his old age, Xerxes became so furious that he ordered that eldest son to be cut into two pieces and had his entire Persian army march between, between the cut bodies. That's how spiteful he could be. This was a king who, when he ordered a bridge constructed, but soon after the bridge was built and it was destroyed by a storm, he was so enraged that he had the builders of the bridge beheaded. That's how ridiculous he could be. This was a king who, whenever he was defeated in a battle, he would plunge himself into all sorts of sexual pleasures for comfort. And he would even offer a big amount of money to anyone who could come up with a new idea of sexual indulgence. That's how immoral he could be. Such was the character of this king that Esther became the queen for. Now years after Esther became queen, a plot came about to wipe the entire Jewish race living in the Persian Empire. And along with this Jewish genocide, they would also plunder Jewish possessions. You see, this is where you realize here that anti-Semitism has a very ancient history. And this continues to be a problem even today. So anyway, this crisis, this crisis to kill the Jews and steal their possessions, was what made Mordecai and every Jew in Persia put on sackcloth, pour out ash, ashes over their head, weep as loud and bitterly as possible. Lived out in every Jewish household were grief, sorrow, mourning, and fasting. Imagine the scenario naman, di ba? That your whole family, your entire race would be completely destroyed, all dead by the end of the year. And every single possession you own, all that you work hard for, would only be confiscated, repossessed by the very one who had you killed. What 
what will your reaction be, di ba? So when Esther got to know about all this and was asked by Mordecai to go and plead before Xerxes for her people, Esther now faced a fearful dilemma. Because you see, during the Persian era, no one can enter the king's throne room unannounced, nor was anyone allowed to approach the king. Social, social distancing was a royal law. And if anyone desired an audience with the king, he had to be called by the king himself. Because uncalled, there is no way you can come near normal speaking distance with the king. Or else, like Esther said, men with axes in their hands stood around the king's throne to swiftly punish anyone who dares approach the king without be being called. You know, this is when I realize the contrast between the human king and the king of kings. Human kingship is nothing more than a royal prison. No one is at liberty to draw near nor express their feelings. As opposed to the court of the king of kings, that upon his footstool we may at any time come boldly and be sure to have an answer of peace to our prayer of faith. But to get back to our story, faced with that hesitation whether to approach the king unannounced, but also aware that if she remained silent, she along with her whole Jewish kin would also suffer. So Mordecai gave her the encouragement to recognize her moment of destiny with this telling question, who knows? but that you have come to a royal position for such a time as this. And Esther, at that moment, with only a brief silence of time to weigh Mordecai's counsel, with only a few moments to consider what Mordecai told her, but that was all she needed. She became determined to make a difference no matter the personal consequences to her. And her words, if I perish, I perish. If a guard drives a sword through my heart, I perish doing the right thing. If the king orders my execution, so be it. Wow. You see, this allows serious contemplation. Because the very moment when you recognize your own destiny, your fear will turn to faith. Any hesitation will become a determination. And pretty much like Esther lived through, her concern for her safety shifted to concern for her people's survival. She reached her own personal hour of decision and not found one thing. If I perish, I perish. This was more than an expression of resignation to the inevitable. This became more like words of courageous determination. She rose up to the need. She seized the opportunity. She answered the call. Kapatid, learn from this. That when any particular opportunity arises to serve God and your generation, when you see a need has to be met, when that moment came for you, come for you to answer the call, take care that you do not let that opportunity slip you by. Rise up, seize it, obey God. Because you know why? It is true, totoo po, God may have chosen to use you and I. But God is by no means dependent on us. Do not think that we are indispensable to the Lord's purposes. That God's work will grind to a halt if we refuse to obey Him. Our sovereign and mighty God will accomplish all His will with or without us. He will be heard and needed even if we do not care to recognize Him, even if we choose to completely unacknowledge Him. He remains God, sovereign and almighty, and no one and nothing can obscure His will. Remember this, kapatid. God calls us not because He needs us, but because we need to find fulfillment in serving Him. Rise up, heed the call, obey God. 
and you will see His promises, His justice, His providence, and His purpose for you will shine brilliantly. If you must know, the story that began with the possible annihilation of God's people ended with Jewish preservation. When Esther entered the presence of Xerxes, Xerxes extended his scepter to Esther and gave her pa practically a blank check of requests. Give thought, kapatid, to the turn of events here. Esther and Mordecai, in the beginning of the story, seem doomed to a fate of hopelessness, pawns to the demand of a pagan king. But towards the end, it is very moving to see Esther, who had every possible comfort given her, would prepare to risk everything so as to prevent the disaster that threatens God's chosen people. You know, without question, this story reveals that God possesses and exercises absolute power over all, that the finger of God is directing every details to bring about deliverance, that God is acting in providence for His people's well-being and protection. You see, in this story, there may be no obvious display of miraculous inter intervention, yet the whole scenario in all its ultimate meaning was a mighty miracle in itself. The mighty miracle was evident in how the sovereign God engineers non-miraculous events to bring about his desired and determined outcome. And this miracle was made all the more miraculous simply because it achieved the distinct outcome without the need for supernatural miracles. Are you making sense of what I'm saying? That though man may not feel God's presence, even if God may not be heard in the lips of the people He created other than in vain, in vain. But still, no person or detail of life escape God's control. God is always at work. He does not only rule over the major issues in our life, but He also uses the trivialities of our lives to accomplish His purposes. And an even greater miracle is that God works in harmony with our freedom. What does this mean? You see, Xerxes made his own decisions. Haman plotted the destruction of another human being. Esther showed fear and hesitation. You see, clearly exposed here, right, was how God is great enough to give people genuine freedom of will. But you see, know this as well. Much as men are given free will, much as we have our own free will, but the giver of free will will cause the will of men to turn out the way God wants them to. Simply lang po kapatid, your will will ultimately contribute to God's divine will. We simply cannot escape the hand or the will of God. Na kahit na ano pa ang desisyon natin sa buhay, God's plan for mankind still stands and His and His will alone will ultimately be accomplished that testifies to His existence even if God is never acknowledged or named or mentioned. But my friend is a God. And that brings us to the title of my message and the challenge I leave you today. Umayos na lang po tayo. We might as well align our lives in the will of God. Either we destined ourselves to be God's friend or His enemy. Pahirapan pa ba ang sarili natin? Trust God. Cooperate with God. Align our lives with the will of God. Because ultimately, God will complete His plans and our choice will only affect our destiny. But it will never frustrate the plan. It will not at all thwart the purpose. By no means will it ever hinder the will of God. Hindi tayo kailangan ng Diyos to fulfill His plan. Pero, kailangan natin ng Diyos in this life and in the afterlife. Kapatid, 
align your free will with that of God. Let us pray. Father, you who uphold creation by your wisdom and strength, I pray that I may serve you, but only as you give me that very wisdom and strength that comes from you and you alone. Give us sufficient grace to accomplish your will. Help us to live in righteousness and humility of heart to fulfill your word. Guide us as we walk in your spirit and in your truth. Our Jesus, our Savior, may we be to you a servant, faithful and true. And in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Go and be a blessing. Hello everyone, we are inviting you to join us this coming May 7 as we kick off our May to June pastoral series entitled Unlocking the Parables, Short Stories of Jesus. From the title itself, we're going to unlock and study some parables from the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. This is open to all ages every Friday at 7.30pm so we hope you can all join us. Stay tuned to our page WWCF, Young Adults Ministry for more updates. God bless and see you there! Good day, brothers and sisters. In behalf of Word for the World Couples Ministry, we would like to invite all couples, couples-to-be, and all singles out there to our upcoming special event entitled Real Talk Couples Online Edition. It will be a one-day treat full of enriching and learning moments to strengthen our relationships, especially during this time of pandemic. This is a free seminar which will happen on May 29, Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. To register, kindly click the link shown on the screen or scan the QR code posted in our Word for the World Makati Facebook page. Come and invite your family and friends. Thank you and see you there! Thank you.